of Discover. Uh, there's quite a few characters in a book we recognize already. From what I see, there's Polaris, Quicksilver, and Gambit. We're going to take a look at this series, some of the artwork, and I'm just giving my thoughts and opinions. I'm doing these comic book reviews in a new slideshow-like format. I think will be more pleasing on the eye for you guys as well as easier for me to narrate and show you the pages um, so you can see the artwork and um, the dialogue in detail rather just seeing my hand turn pages and you actually get the full comic book this way so you know let's see how this goes and let's go on to the first page right here are the credits you gotta give credit where credit is due written by Peter David artist Carmine D. Gian Domencio. Gian Domencio. And you can see the rest of the credits as well. This book opens with um, a bunch of scientists talking to a captured assailant. Um, they don't show who the person is at first. Uh, they're just casually talking about the experience they're going to do on the mutants and the person obviously gives them um, some hell, you know, tells them to drop dead, and then the scientists, you know, just casually walk away, say they're going to Starbucks, okay, so that leads us to want to know who they are speaking with, you know, create some mystery earlier in the book. The next scene we're treated to a scene of Gambit, it's sort of his character introduction into this series, and you can see him lowering down on his harness through some uh, through a security system a laser light beam like security system you can see him maneuver his way through and he is grabbing up an artifact some, some sort of artifact and in comes Wolverine Wolverine has informed Gambit that the owner of the place has already informed them that he was there he, or Gambit, I guess, set off an alarm already. Wolverine cuts his harness. He comes in and tells him, you know, pretty much reprimands Gambit in these next couple of scenes. He tells him he's supposed to be one of the teachers at the school, yet he's slacking on his duties. And he's part of the, he's leading the Thieves Guild, actually. Gambit didn't know Wolverine knew that, but Wolverine explains to him, you know, you can't steal, you know, poses, um, you know, it, it, it's a bad look for mutants, it's a bad look for him. Pretty much Wolverine, like I said, reprimands him like a child. And they get on a Blackbird jet, you know. I guess Wolverine further tells him, you know, he's never really around. Um, he's not really fulfilling his duties at the school, like I said. Uh, so, oddly enough, Wolverine has, like, he's on, like, ten different teams on Marvel. So it's funny that he's appearing has even a time to appear and stop Gambit and reprimand him for not being able to show up on time. Wolverine is notorious for leaving the team at times, but I guess he's, you know, pretty much showing his leadership skills here by getting on Gambit about not really being a good X-Man. In the next scene, we see Gambit in the bar drinking. You can see there's some damage done. Um, you know, obviously, he must have been in a bar fight. You can see the tables on fire. He must have kicked these guys' ass. He's drinking. And then he tells the bartender, you know, he wants another, whatever it was. And then a voice from behind says he wants coffee. <laughs> and then he looks behind him, the hell, share? Yeah. Boom, Polaris in her new costume. And I don't like it. I don't like any of these new X Factor costumes, and we'll see more of them later on in a, in the book. But you can see the cat of this corporation on the costume, and they're yellow, and I don't know. It just doesn't appeal to me as an X Men or X Factor costume. It just it's just different, but it's not my taste. So you know, Gambit. You know, it's good to see you. They reunite. I guess he hasn't seen her in a while. Um, I guess last time he saw her, she was crazy. He was like, aren't you insane? I mean, there was word that you caused a bit of, of a hullabaloo at a bar a long time ago. She said she had a bad day. I did not see that scene, but I, I, I guess in the previous X Factor series, you know, she had an incident in the bar. So 
so they're talking they go to Starbucks what's up with Starbucks in this book I guess Starbucks is being sponsored by Marvel right now um, or Marvel yeah or vice versa uh, so they're in the coffee shop talking and she's pretty much wanting him telling him you know that uh, what if I want to stay with the X-Men uh, with my thieving on the sideline you know he's trying to convince her that he wants to continue what he's doing but she's asking him how does that make you feel and he pretty much wants to cut to the chase what are you asking me what's going on what are you not telling me she's being a bit mysterious and then she just says I'd like you to take a ride with me she said he says to where she says to Virginia he's like what the hell is in Virginia aside from a colonial settlement to refugees from Washington DC and she's like one way to find out so they go so they're on this jet. Uh, it's a short jaunt to a private airfield. Minutes later, um, they're airborne. So, you know, Gambit, he's still drinking. He says it's a nice low jet, but it's no um, Blackbird, obviously. Uh, and then she tells him, several industries are rising in corporation. That's the industries that, that the jet belongs to. That's the industries that this weird cat-like symbol insignia belongs to um several industries is pretty much the basis of this team and you'll see more of that later in this book they're drinking they're like oh incoming we have a missile coming good thing they have somebody with magnetic powers on on board and she casually says oh i see it don't worry about it she snaps her fingers and the missile explodes you know, much like her dad, that's something Magneto could do. You know, Gambit's obviously looking worried. You know, who who the hell fired missiles at us? She's like the enemy, most likely. And Servo has uh, missile firing enemies. Servo has all kinds of enemies. So that goes to show that the organization has people watching them. They're being watched and tracked. And usually when you have people after you, you know, maybe your cause, maybe you have a good cause. So... Let's see. So they get to Servo Industries. Uh, they walk into this big. Actually, Servo Industries own the airport that they're landing in. So it goes to show how large and powerful and uh, you know wealthy this corporation is. So he's you know Lorna Miss Dane is greeted by the the door um, the doorman as they walk in. Uh, she's checking them in. And in true to Gambit form, he bumps into some random guy, but then he is checked by um, Polaris. She goes, Remy. She he says, What's the pro Remy? He lifted that guy's wallet. You know, I thought I like that scene. It just goes to show that no matter what's going on, Gambit is going to be Gambit. You can tell if he continues like this, he'll be a bit of comic relief to some of the more serious storylines. Um, as well as you can see some good character development there. He's always been a thief, so once a thief, always a thief, right? And then she gets on him as well. Really? I mean, really? So, what's up with Gambit being, um, talks to you like he's a child? Alright. So, he, ju he just makes a comment. He's just sharpening his skills. But, you know, they go into the, um, to the building further up the elevator. And then... They're greeted by a woman by the name of Linda Kwan, and they call it X Factor. So X Factor is a suite within Servo Industries. It's probably just a subsidiary. Servo Industries is a larger company, you know, which is weird. You know, usually the superhero team is the main focus of these these buildings. Um, so you know that that's part of the com um is I guess it's a committee they have. So, who are you, scientists or superheroes? She says, Miss Kwan, me, uh, good lord, I'm in public relations. My job is to make servo industries look good to the public. You know, usually these public relations people, the superhero teams, are a little shady themselves anyway. Um, and Gambit asks, is X Factor going to help? You know what? You know what? The name's taken right. Jamie, by Jamie Madrox, aka Multiple Man. And uh, the answer, actually, not anymore. Linda Lorna, uh, morning, sir. Uh, somebody walks in, and the person who answered Gambit's question, so you would be Harrison 
snow. Earlier in the book, um, Polaris told Gambit that that's who they're there to meet. Uh, so, Guizzo, Mr. LeBeau, I am the CEO and president of Servo Industries. I think I've heard of you. Of course, I've heard of you. Maybe, may I call you Remy? Sure. So, he's being all casual with them. You know, it's weird. This guy, he, him and Gambit, just exchanged some more banter. And then, you know, they're talking further about the mission. Um, in these couple of scenes, let me just give you the gist of it. He's saying how... You know, the government had superhero teams or private superhero teams, uh, global superhero teams. Why can't they have corporate superhero teams to serve the interest of a corporation? So it's almost, think about it like this, it's almost a superhero team It's going to serve one business, which is, which can make for some interesting storytelling. You get to the next scene and he introduces them to their next team member and it's Quicksilver. Pietro, what are you doing? So I guess that's a surprise of uh, Polaris as well. So, uh, yeah, so as they introduce Quicksilver, Polaris and Quicksilver have some brother sister um, back and forth. You know, she says Harrison Pietro be many things, but kind of sweet is one of them. So he's trying to upsell Quicksilver as a good good character, but we know Quicksilver has one of the shadiest pasts in Marvel. And from this scene right here. I, I guess uh, in the last time, Pol the last time Polaris and Quicksilver met, it wasn't so pleasant. Uh, I think you, I don't think you get to lecture me, considering the last time I saw you, you tried to shoot me. She says I was drunk. You know, Gambit referenced the last time she was drunk when she was mad, uh, went crazy in a bar as well. Uh, he had, he replies, most people fall down when they're drunk, not open fire on their half brother. So. Pretty, pretty funny banter right there. Um, we've seen him work with um, mostly the Scarlet Witch and Avengers. Um, and I think maybe one of the older um, iterations of X-Factor, we've seen uh, Polaris work with Quicksilver. In fact, they have worked before in X-Factor. But let's see how this new dynamic plays out. Um... Okay, so she storms off. All right, fine. Um, not now. I'm not drinking anymore. So why go back to the Avengers? Um, I'm not. There's not. Not what? We had a bit of a falling out. So I guess he, he's not going back to the Avengers because he had a falling out. Um, in the previous one of the previous um, issues. Uh, he's trying to convince them, her that he's not evil. So stop accusing him. So, you know, Quicksilver has that stigma of um, being one of the main catalysts that caused the House of M. He manipulated Scarlet Witch into um, erasing the mutants the, and creating that phenomenon. They, they depowered all but 198 of them. Um, after that, he tried to redeem himself by stealing the Terrigenous crystals from the humans. Uh, so, you know, he has a bit of a, a shady past. So, you know, she gives him a sisterly talk, and I guess she makes him feel a little better, because he was walking away. Wait, it's... She doesn't finish her, her statement, but she says, Pietro, if you really want to come on board, then you know, sure, you know, that's as good as he's going to get from her. And Gambit, you know, as a comic relief for the series, he just says, he's spying on us for the Avengers. Quicksilver answers, no, I'm not. And then Gamma's like, whatever. Hey, just hurry up. Um, just hurry out of curiosity. What's the mission? So they're still not sure what the first mission is. And then they're back on their, their jet. Um, you know, Harry answers, I'm glad you asked, Remy. It involves Dr. Terrence Hoffman. He's a noted biologist, but apparently he's embarked in some rather hazardous direction. So... Uh, they're going after AIM, the advanced information mechanics. You can tell by their costumes. And they're infiltrating this AIM facility. They're taking down the AIM soldiers. They're going through the hallway. They're being fed intel. You can see a good scene of their new costumes here as well. Yellow and gray uh, with the Servo Industries cat. I think that's a kitten, a kitten on there. 
Alright. Whatever floats their boat. And then in this scene, we see the scientists from before about to operate. They're being told that they're being infiltrated by mutants. And he doesn't seem phased or scared about it. You know, he says, he also says, uh, you know, he welcomes them because he needs more mutants to experiment on as well. So he must have either some powers of his own or ace up his sleeve. But the mutant that they were operating on from the opening scene is a mutant by the name of Fatel. And as you can see, she's a, they reveal who she is in this scene. And in the lower right hand corner of this page, you can see the Servo Industries cat, which means this is the end of the book. And then we are treated to artwork for the second cover. And you can see it's Gambit riding Quicksilver's back. Uh, Quicksilver has some pretty interesting lighting effects on this new costume. Uh, if anything, I, I'd say that that's pretty damn cool right there. It's like his costumes interacting with his powers. So there you have it. This is the all-new X-Factor uh, 2014, issue number one. If I was to rate this book out of 10, um, I would definitely rate, I would rate the overall visuals of this story and the tone of this whole direction of X Factor, I'll rate it a 6 because to me it feels very contrived, it feels like we're just looking at some sort of, um, it really is look, feel like I'm looking at a corporate advertisement, uh, especially with Starbucks being included in there. Um, but as far as the potential and the characters they have, I give it a perfect 10 because you got Gambit, you have Quicksilver, you have Polaris, um, and there's a few others that are going to join a, a team, obviously, as, as the book goes on. And this is just an inter introductory issue. Um, the stuff I judged harshly was just um, superficial stuff, but this, this was an, a very interesting and entertaining book to read um, with some good character exchanges. Um, and I feel that it, it could set up for a really good, interesting series. Uh, let's see where this whole corporate theme goes. And uh, if we see some interesting battles and crossovers with the Avengers and the other X-Men books. Okay, everyone. Thank you for checking out my video. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And check out my next video.